All right, let's get into Whoa. WWF Monday Night Raw, June 14th, 1999. How old were you? This was the worst Raw ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the observer notes for Hold the on. time. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. Top oh, shit. Oh, oh no. It. This is the worst oh, show shit. ever. I can't even open a beer because it's broke. <laughs> is that real? <laughs> yeah, it's for shitsky. What is it? You popped it and it just didn't open? The tap broke up. It went up in the beer. That's how you guys shotgun it, big man. You dumbass shotgun it for Who's the boys. Be drinking around here now. Well, not anymore. <laughs> I need it. I need a crown and seven. <laughs> I actually think. I actually think drinking on this show derailed the whole show. Actually, maybe. Yeah, you, Tony. Here we go. Hey, I hold, stuck my we gotta start over. Go. You stuck your what? Are you shotgunning? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> This guy's crazy. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the observer notes. Uh, not too many going into the show as Tony chugs the fucking beer. I'm not <laughs> chugging a beer. Oh, okay. I opened it with my finger. We're good. Not too many here. It wasn't, uh, you know, too, too many things that I felt like we should bring up on the show, at least. They're not fun. There's some fun fucking stuff for you. June 14th, Wrestling Observer. Tammy Lynn Sitch put up a sale in an auction that her implants she used while in the WWF, and they ended up getting sold for $11,000. $999.99. I know. How do you sell implants? That's a great question. I liked you how you asked take it them too. out. How do you do that? You cut them out and then you, you just take, take them. them out. What do you mean? You say that so certainly. You can't just, take them out. You just <laughs> remove You can't just I, remove them. I don't say anything without certainty, <laughs> even if it's wrong. <laughs> I'm just about to do like a them? surgical knife and then they just come out and then you just sell them. In my mind, Jameson, you could just reach in and pull them out. Just get them out of there. Unzip We're going to get you out of there. <laughs> <laughs> just take them out. All right, no problem, man. Speaking That's good of that, advice. You know, yes. you know when you die, they don't go away, those implants? They're just there. And well, they Who take told you them that? out. They what take them out. You're talking to no, a dead don't. person that told you that? They, Tony, well, they t I know they take them out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hold on. He's explaining to do. He's telling you, bro. <laughs> Look here. <Okay. laughs> All right, we might need to move on, Johnny. What All else right. you got? Terry Funk <laughs> beat Sabu terrifying. in a match billed as one last dance for Apocalypse Res Wrestling on June 6th in Ontario before 653 fans. Of course, Terry Funk announced that the match uh, was his retirement match. <laughs> it was also one? announced... Yeah, one last dance, him and Sabu, last match ever. Uh, it was also announced that this at the show and the fans were crying and chanting, please don't go. He's 55 in a few weeks and he's given more to this business than most wrestlers could do in 20 years. He's going to be in pain for the rest of his life because of his, str his strong will to put on an entertaining show every time he goes out there for three decades plus. <laughs> so Terry Funk is retired as of this show let's talk about our favorite terry funk memories my favorite terry funk memory is when he comes back at least a year later <laughs> <laughs> probably came back the night he probably worked the house show somewhere just wasn't recorded or anywhere <laughs> it probably was it was probably wwe <laughs> you know what yeah. terry funk's last match was actual According to cage match it's uh it? 2017 uh, the I rock and roll express and terry funk defeat brian christopher doug gilbert and jerry Lawler. I'll be honest, unless my concept of time is fucked up, I swear I've seen him wrestle live since then. <laughs> so I don't know if that's right. <laughs> the June 21st Observer, for whatever, whatever it's worth, uh, Paul Heyman is no longer writing checks to talents after the shows. The checks are instead written by Gene Sharkowski during the week and given to Debbie Beaumont and passed out at the shows. ECW has switched banks and the new bank has sufficient funds and the boys were told no more checks would bounce. Since the house shows have not drawn well as of late, aside from the $100,000 house in Detroit late last May, uh, some That's sort of influx of gate. new money must have come in. Yeah, that is a gigantic gate for that. <laughs> yeah, wow. New bank for ECW, so no more bounce checks. That yeah, is bet, historically I accurate. None of them. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to start writing checks, true. I think. <laughs> we're going to start writing checks? Yeah, I think that's actually the move. Yeah, I think we should put him in the name Tony Pete. Zah. <laughs> Hold on, let me get that infinite money glitch going here. I'll figure it out. Yeah, we already <laughs> we'll got that. that Speaking of ECW, the page six gossip column by Richard Johnson. Now, hold on, that can't be right. Wait, wait a minute. Richard. <laughs> Undercover? No way. No way. 
No way. Dick Johnson wrote for the New York Post. <laughs> Holy fuck. It's been a long time coming. Richard Johnson in the New York Post on 614 included an item about RVD's appearance on NBC's Saturday morning show City Guys. The item read, NBC has unwittingly put a podhead in its squeaky clean Saturday morning kitty lineup. Extreme Championship wrestler Rob Van Dam, who brags about his cannabis consumption and wears high times t-shirts and ECW promos, was that signed has nothing to, to do with weed. <laughs> was I- <laughs> <laughs> was signed to guest star on an episode of the Peacock Network City Guys, a popular Saturday morning show. The episode slated to air next fall was already taped when NBC brass were alerted to Van Damme's hooch habit. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just love that he's a pothead on our show. <laughs> how did they, I mean, how did they possibly not? You, you take one look at RVD, you know that that's his whole fucking thing. It was his whole thing the entire ECW run, especially in 99. Yeah, if you what? watched one thing of it, <laughs> ECW, what? you would know. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, man. Big pot guy, RVD. Oh, here's an update, by the way. The guy who bid $11,998.99 <laughs> For Tammy Sitch's old breast implants that hardened her WWF implants, didn't pay, so they're back up for auction. <laughs> oh, he didn't fucking pay? He didn't pay. Come on, it's like bro. eBay. You could just go on there and bid on shit and don't ever pay. Yeah, just don't do anything, man. You th- she probably had to put them back in, too, to preserve well, them. Thankfully, it's pretty simple to do that. So Now tell me <laughs> no, more. It is it? Tell me more. Link. <laughs> what, what do you need to know? Link it bio, Johnny. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, WCW has already grown tired of using Ricky Rackman, <laughs> which is why he hasn't been Me on Nitro. Too. <laughs> Me too. We, we shit on Ricky Rackman? Yeah, fuck Ricky Rackman. Bro. Oh, damn. <laughs> and last, at one point, Conan's group with Mysterio and some others was talked about as being called the Filthy Animals, but that was turned down in favor of No Limit Soldiers. <laughs> Uh, well, that changes. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love both the animals and the No Limit Soldiers, right? Both of them. I, well, I think the OG was No Limit Soldiers, and then oh, they also nixed the idea of Kidman being in the group. So a lot of things changed here from here to when they actually do <laughs> wow. the fucking filthy animals. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say Kidman was a filthy animal. He, I'm pretty sure he was, right? Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. And so was Disco Inferno. All right. Well, Whoa. <laughs> he was also, this guy was also in the wolf pack, too. Did you know that? He was also in the wolf pack. Okay. That's true. There you go. You don't need to lie on the show. All right. So we kick things off on the actual oh, show yeah. here uh, dun, 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 with dun. a cold oh, no, open. A bumper. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It was a cold open here. The greater power was revealed. I think was this last week they did the reveal. Last week. Last week was a it's good May episode Austin. of Raw. Firing yeah. at all cylinders here. What the hell? We talked about this before, but WWF just kept doing hits after hits after hits they just blew their whole load it's, every night it's yeah how many things were on the like they recap stuff throughout the show for the last week show and i'm like that was on the same fucking episode it, dude I, that's exactly what i thought when i saw it i was like they did the it's big me show, austin big show putting taker through the ring was the same as the reveal it's me austin <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shut up a bitch <laughs> it was me all along you all bought it hook line and sinker <laughs> even my immediate family bought it Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> but I didn't watch it because because Eric Bischoff told me who the higher power was on night. Tony linked the thing earlier to us. I feel like we talked about this on the show before, but yeah, Eric Bischoff just said, "Oh, well, I can't say the name, but that higher power guy, yeah, it's a VM. That could be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Mac Mick, Mac something, Vincent yeah. Mergel. <laughs> dude, that's fucked. He, he didn't. He never learned his lesson, obviously, about tipping off. Because well, I tuned uh, right over to WF when I heard that yeah, as a kid. Of course. Well, that episode last week's Raw got a uh-huh. 6.7 rating. What did this do? Um, 6.7. Oh, they, they kept, so they, they kept okay. that. Yeah. They kept it wow, up. All right. Okay. Now, um, all right. Do you have what the next week one is? <laughs> uh, 6.0 for the next one. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they didn't really drop out of big ratings until uh, like 2002 is when they started to kind of fall out a little bit. When they Two, and you know why? Actually, you know, it's probably 2000, like the end or a bit of 2001 was probably sure. when they stopped. What really put the nail in the coffin, James, is getting the F out. That's what really did it to them. I, you know, I think so too. I, I'm glad in, you know, my dad's brain and all my dad's friends brains that they never got the f out <laughs> the f's still there and always has been there and will always be there yeah. i wish i was like that i wish it Me was too. in my brain it was always the f there and never got out <laughs> i think that's a thing for a lot of like that generation just once it turned to f it was just or once it turned to e it was like oh well this this is fake now <laughs> it's like it, it's yeah. like it turned from wwf to wwe and then like 
they never found it on TV ever again. Like they never, <laughs> never impossible. clicked on WWE. They're like, damn, I guess the show's just never airing ever again. I don't. <laughs> they canceled wrestling entirely. <laughs> yeah, w- forever. They went, they went on their TiVo and typed in WWF and couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. Yeah, I bet that happened too. That, 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 I'm too. sure it did. Yeah, 100. percent And they didn't keep. They don't. You know, they kept forgetting every week. Oh, this is a pain in the ass. I'm not fucking looking for this anymore. Now where's WCW? I watched that. No, what no. the. WCW? ECW is no damn no, it. I guess wrestling's over. And then eventually they find NWA TNA, but realize they have to pay for it. <laughs> no, no. no. Then you get a black box and you watch it anyway for free. So You're damn matter. right, Tony. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don West, Mike Denae, high five right there. Yeah. Uh, so they show uh, the immediate family gimmick. Yes. Uh, some crazy lines that they don't show anymore whenever they could show this stuff back in back then they don't sure. show like the stephanie abduction at least the uh, the beginning That's part crazy they go, stephanie yeah. is missing and then i think jr says like well obviously she's been abducted by the ministry <laughs> 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 obviously <laughs> dad shane how could you be so cruel to me it's just business <laughs> <laughs> They also where show the to where Stephanie. to Stephanie. Yeah, yes, dude, do. that's oh, yeah, crazy, yeah. crazy yeah. line. Even better than all that, though, Tony, they show the Linda profile. No! <laughs> no, not the Linda Linda profile. LRB CEO <laughs> promo. Dude, dude, we talked about the blowing their load. I dude. can't believe they did that and the reveal and, and the chokeslam all in one row. same show. Why so, would you do the reveal of Vince? Wouldn't that be a cliffhanger? And no, then, bro. Vince Russo says, "Go, go, go, keep dude, going." Dude, who am I to tell them? They were at the top. <laughs> They're rocking. Linda McMahon is here, and she says, no. "Let's talk business." <laughs> Earlier today, I stepped down as the CEO of this company, but not before I handpicked my own successor. And it's going to be a little less formal around here, more casual. Oh, this God. is the shittiest promo ever. <laughs> Cut off jeans. It, queen. <laughs> keep it going. Dude. How about a little profanity? Drinking on the job. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know, Linda Ellerby. Let them know. Dude, that's a, that, when I heard this shit, though, I thought it was so cool. I don't know what I thought Stokel owning the WWF was as a kid, though. I thought yeah. it was the craziest shit ever. Like, what the fuck is Stone Cold going to do no, now that and he I owns an- the company? I anticipated he was going to own it forever. <laughs> <laughs> Stone Cold just runs WWF now. Whatever. Cool. <laughs> Uh, do that drinking on the job yep that line has burned in my head forever it's a good <laughs> line I, I always remember a little more casual <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell uh, Stone Cold has announced as the new CEO Austin comes out in the Stone Cold baseball jersey jeans really the only difference is he's wearing a red tie <laughs> the tie is awesome <laughs> and, and he takes it off before the promo ends too. yeah it's getting a little annoying yeah. Uh, it shows Vince McMahon's parking place at this random arena that this, randomly has the Vince McMahon parking place. I think now it was the headquarters, sm- no? I thought it was at the arena. No, I think this was supposed to be they, WWF that, headquarters. That makes they more didn't sense. say yeah. where it was. I, maybe they did they, say, but I like it seemed the like a idea random arena Vince, parking lot. <laughs> Vince just had random parking at spots the Austin. arena. Austin went around and took them all. <laughs> uh, he put a small X over it and then had his own stencil and had a Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> parking <laughs> space. Why didn't he just remove Vince's? He had all the equipment to put his own. He just couldn't well, remove the other one? Why didn't he just park there? <laughs> why did you go get the right? stencil and the- <laughs> it's, a, it's proven a point just to show that he's here for good uh we have uh the intro dun, for dun, dun, uh dun, 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 of course dun, dun. the attitude era raw i feel like we have watched i don't know 500 of these we probably yeah. watched a whole attitude era at this yeah. point sure um but i don't know i don't know if anything has like the feeling that this has when it like kicks off N- no not really man i mean the the hype that i feel for this is like no other uh I have two things i i don't for some reason in my mind i don't remember mankind getting his ass whooped as much as he does in this intro <laughs> just that was basically the- his whole fucking thing i think austin uh says something about it too yeah 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 oh yeah that's true yeah he says later and then uh there's a clip of Jeff Hardy doing a swanton bomb that I feel like I've never seen before in the intro. It was like purple hair Jeff Hardy doing a swanton, like just a regular one. I was like, what? I don't oh, know. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's very strange. I remember when I was young, like if I missed the intro to the show, I'd be like upset. <laughs> I'm not watching now. <laughs> yeah, like I'd be like super upset if I missed like the... <laughs> yeah. Dude, th- yeah, I feel like the amount of pyro for this one was even more than usual. Well, they know they're coming off the, one of the biggest shows they ever had ever in the history right. of the world. Yeah, oh, we got more money. Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a shitty show for you guys this week. Get ready for this one. <laughs> 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 we go to a pre-tape. 
uh, CEO Steve Austin's first day on the job. Oh, oh I was going to make a comment. Speaking of CEO, uh, the, all the signs in the crowd were crazy here. Uh, there was oh, yes. 500 CEO 316 signs. Everyone was original here. There was Everyone... also one, Tony, that said puppies and had some droopy ass titties drawn there on was. it. <laughs> That's that was awesome. awesome. They were Those, were dogs, style. Those were dogs. Oh, right. Yeah. The dogs were hanging for sure, brother. That's <laughs> crazy. That was like front row two, right? In the yeah, <laughs> With the nipples, dude. Yeah. Those are dog noses. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, Austin's first day on the job here. Uh, he's standing outside the WWF headquarters in front of a bunch of people with wheelbarrows. And always says, I'm going to go see if everything's cool now. You you guys just hang tight here. Jumping ahead a bit here, Austin makes these guys stand out here for at least an hour. <laughs> so uh, Austin walks into the building. Uh, security is answering the phones at the front desk. And Austin walks in and says, yeah, are you working hard? <laughs> what a horrible way to greet yourself to somebody. <laughs> I can't not think about Beyond the Mat when they show the WWF headquarters with the lady. Oh, yeah. Well, Wrestling Federation. One moment. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> she was very uh, she was very happy to be in this segment. She was, as she should be, working with all stuff. Well, it's my boss now. I don't know why this is her now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody has to speak like that now. So. Yeah. Hey, Steve. She hey. does eventually. She does. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, first day on job, you where's my office? And then uh, she's, oh, you know, it's on the top floor. And she answers the phone. Oh, good morning, World Wrestling Federation. And Austin stares at her and says, What's that? <laughs> hang hang up the phone. <laughs> She's just doing her job. Hang up the phone. <laughs> you always answer the phone like that? Well, yeah. How long you been working here? Let me let me take the next one. They both just stand there. What good timing. They, the phone must have been just ringing off the gimmick the whole time because a, a phone call immediately comes in. Give me that. <laughs> yeah, who the hell is this? Really? Well, what the hell do you want? <laughs> Vince McMahon? No, I fired that son bitch. He's just giving away fucking everything here. If he comes back, I'll give that son bitch. I'll tell that son bitch to give you a call. And this is a crazy line. If I don't see you around, well, I'll see you around. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> uh, and I was, can you do that? Yes, sir. And he leaves, and she uh, answers the phone the same way. Uh, so oh, no, she goes. He goes. If you can handle that, give me a hell yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Hell yeah. yeah. He's walking away. Then he. What the hell do you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she should have just did it as Austin. Do you remember the Super Bowl commercial? Yes. Yes. That's what this whole every scale. That's these what felt I thought like. too. Yeah, it does Very feel just Super like that. Bowl. Super Bowl commercial is awesome. I don't know how. I mean, I know it cost them a lot of money, but fucking hell, they should have did something like that again. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, also, that Steve Austin, no knee braces at this point. This is a very crazy looking man. I'm oh. so used to sewing Steve Austin with a knee, at least one. Maybe a casual, you know, business Steve. There's no reason to bring in your knee braces to work. I think he had to change his look. I think Vince said he looked too much like Horace Hogan. He's like, look, man, <laughs> you got to drop the knee braces. There's a hot guy on the other brand that's doing they some crazy shit. They are killing you shit. over there, bro. He's got the knee braces. You're wearing jean shorts. He's got full pants with a knee brace over You're it, man. You're fucked, bro. Jersey? Nah, no way. Go back to the t-shirt. You're done. Split that. Open that shirt up right now. Uh, so we get the corporate ministry town hall up next. Chance. This is a cr <laughs> this is a crazy fucking team, man. The remix song here is crazy too. I man. love, I this, love song. this theme. No yeah, chance in hell, awesome. like Satan remix. This is sweet. <laughs> it's uh the whole all the stars are here. <laughs> this is uh Bro, you did you see <laughs> Triple H? Dude, what is he wearing? Triple H in the leather pants with the zip shirt zipped down to his sternum <laughs> with, with the, cross? the hat. <laughs> and the this cross? is crazy, Netflix? man. I don't know what the hell is going on. When they're coming out here, Deb says this is how she pictures us showing up at Denny's at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they see for sure. <laughs> yeah. When, they, when we ask, you guys get do milkshakes at this hour? <laughs> Chance. <laughs> <laughs> you, speaking of outfits, do you see how high Vince has his pants pulled up here? <laughs> they are up to his titties. This is classic 99 style, man. Vince was doing <laughs> shit back then. Crazy bastard, man. So the whole crew is here. It's fucking Midian, Viscera, the Acolytes, Triple H, China, Boss Man. Uh, Test was kicked out of the group, or I think Test was there for a minute, wasn't he? Maybe not. I don't remember. You get the hell out of here. You get the hell out of this group. That's right. Yeah. Uh, immediate asshole chance uh, for for Vince before he even says anything. Visser is crazy wearing a headband with just some fucking buttons on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy look, man. I don't know how to even explain Viscera. Like that's a 
I don't even know, bro. That's fucked up. Yeah, he's just he's big trash bag outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, Vince looks at the crowd and says, I must say, you're downright rude. <laughs> that is very true. The only thing worse than Stone Cold being WWF champion, and I don't think there could be anything worse than that, is Stone Cold being the CEO. Yo, what? this is the worst promo of all time, man. <laughs> this has got to be like... It's yeah, Vince's is worst. It's literally the worst promo of all time. It went on for 20 minutes, man. It was just it awful. It goes on forever. Um, it, gets, it does get fucking worse. Uh, so he said last Monday was to be a celebration, a culmination of three months of planning and scheming and executing the greatest Machiavellian plan in the WBF. Oh, Machiavelli. <laughs> Triple H's shirt is out of control, I wrote here. <laughs> he's just fucking... It is, <laughs> and he keeps messing with the zipper. I know, and it keeps cutting to him, too, because he's standing very close to Shane, so every time it he cuts... He turns around, to get... the hard cam's got his leather ass cheeks just hanging out. <laughs> he's looking at Viscera, I'm looking at Viscera, I don't know what's going on, man. I didn't even see Midian until, like, 15 minutes into this. Midian is just crouched out in the corner on the right. Midian there with his pants that spells name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy group of guys right Fucking here, man. Crazy bastard. Vince says, some of you must think there are cracks within the corporate ministry and that it is about to dissolve and wish it disintegrate. Well, that's not going to happen tonight or any night. Shane and I have given great deliberation to the future, the king of the ring. And Stone Cold Steve Austin has challenged Shane and Vince to a handicap match. Now, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if Steve ever says this on the show or on any show. I don't know if Vince was just lying or what here, but he says, uh, there's going to be man. a lion. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Vince says there's going to be a stipulation in the match, and what sort of stipulation should it be added to this handicap match? Well, Vince has an idea. Try this on for size, Shane. What if we engage Austin in a dog pound match? And Lawler says, a what? And I also say, a what? <laughs> this man has never... I, the, the, none of these stipulations he he's ever this heard match, of. James. He heard it. He never heard of any of these stipulations. He just invented before. this, James. Keep going dog on the list ever. here, man. Because this the is crazy. The dog pound match, man. The dog says, pound match is crazy. <laughs> Vince says, we need to see one first. <laughs> They're never crazy, man. I don't never, know. Okay, let me explain the, like the time capsule of the yes, era of sure. Attitude Era. Nobody that watched the Attitude Era ever watched wrestling before or after ever. They just only watched wrestling at that time, so they've never seen a dog collar match in their life. Well, no well, way. They're not going to see one tonight either because it's, it's a, dog a dog pound, pound match. match. Yeah. Well, they've never seen that either. <laughs> Vince says, let's me take a look either. at one tonight. The road dog, Jesse James, let's put a dog collar around his neck. And then the, around the neck of Mr. Ass. And let's connect them with a nice dog chain. That's a dog pound match. <laughs> Great Dude, the, idea. The way that he says we're going to put a collar around Mr. Ass <laughs> is the way that he delivers this is Mr. crazy. Ass. <laughs> yeah, it's very different than I expected him to deliver it. Of course, because, you know, Mr. Ass is a regular name. Uh, Shane has a great idea here as well. He says, you know what? I think we should also have a, a David versus Goliath match with <laughs> Austin being David, but playing the role of Austin is, was going to be XPAC Xbox. <laughs> he always spells it out. That is and, Steve, playing the role of Steve Austin will be X Pac as X Pac. <laughs> As David. As, as well. David. What is this? <laughs> and playing the role of Goliath. David and Stone Cold at the same yeah, time. Yeah, Stone Cold, Steve, David. <laughs> Sean, David, and Steve Austin. Playing the role of Goliath will be the big show. So this is just a match. There's no gimmick here. I don't know how I should be. Xbox versus Big Show? What was the match that Shane was pitching here? <laughs> this is just a match. I actually, he really thought he had something. He said, look, I got this idea. X-Pac versus Big Show. Well, I need a stipulation. David versus Goliath. <laughs> well, so, X-Pac is Stone Cold, and Big Show is, of course, Shane and Vince. That's how this are they works. Gonna get, oh, they're going to get on each other's shoulders so they can be taller, you know? And Shane's going to be on Vince's shoulders. Like a so chicken. Goli like play a yeah, chicken like, with yeah. each other. They, they'd be Goliath, and then Stone Cold would be well, X-Pac. Don't worry. Course. Shane has another idea here. You know, that will co coincide with this. How about the WWF Tag Champions, the Acolytes, play the part of Vince and Shane, and playing the part of Stone Cold will be Kane. Yo, I... <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I like... I don't even know where my head was at listening to this shit, bro. But, like, once he got to that part where the Acolytes were Kane and the fucking... I said, I am doing something else, because I don't know why the fuck this is horrible. <laughs> 
like Vince was trying to come up with gimmick matches. Shane's like, all right, well, let's just have handicap matches. Let's have a handicap match. What if what if the match was a handicap match? They are yeah. telling me they went this. No one had any matches on this show until now. Until this, they all showed up with gear. Hey, that goes to show you: always bring your gear, no matter course, what. Always, always bring your, your fucking gear. gear. I, got a, I also got a question: Who, if Stone Cold is a CEO, they can yes. Vince and Shane can still. What is their role? They can still book matches. I don't know. Just, That's a, I, it, hey, shut up. <laughs> they had to have mentioned Cold. that. I, I, they had to have mentioned like they didn't. Yeah. They never did. Well, did Vince they, and Shane still have stock. They own thirty three percent of the company or something each. Well, because I don't because see, Linda stepped down to make Austin CEO, but I don't think that changed Vince and Shane being owners. Steve Austin, I fired that some bitch. Hey, shut up! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take back what I said at the beginning of the show. This show sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry, Tony. The hits are coming. Vince also would like a blindfold match. He wants Austin in a blindfold match. No. Actually, we're going to call it a blind date match. <laughs> Why? Uh, uh, what if we took Stone Cold on a date? Right. <laughs> yeah. If Test dated Stone Cold, how would what that go? What if we took Stone Cold on a date? So we're going to do Test. <laughs> test. First, and Tess is going to have a blindfold. Tess versus Big Boss Man. What if we took Stone Cold on a date? Well, anyways, Tess versus Big Boss Man up next. What the? He said, you you took Shane's sister, well, my daughter, on a date. <laughs> <laughs> and your opponent tonight, Tess, who will have 20-20 vision, is the Big Boss Man. I need citations for Big Boss Man having 20-20 vision as this well. This is crazy, bro. Well, don't worry, James. That's not it. Vince also would like a handicap match. <laughs> what the? Hey, well, yo. Gonna, gonna, he, <laughs> and we're going to handicap somebody tonight in a straight jacket match. And who belongs in a straight jacket? Well, how about Ken Shamrock in a non-title match for some reason against Jeff Jarrett, who will have full use of all of his limbs. And that's well, and that's it. That's the show. That is so. Everything there is the announcements of all the of all the matches. Instead of just booking all this stuff, they had Vince stand in the ring for twenty minutes and <laughs> just name a bunch of shit. Just come up what with if Steve Austin went on a blind date. <laughs> Test versus Big Boss Man. What if Stone Cold couldn't use his arms? <laughs> Mr. Ass. <laughs> Mr. <Hell>. Ass. <laughs> what the? <laughs> So uh, thank God that's over with. They can't well, just book Stone Cold with some that. crazy match. <laughs> oh shit! What? What you got? Pat Patterson and Jared Briscoe are here. No. Pat to... <laughs> Patterson says, "Vince, I'm talking to you. I've known you for 20 long years, and you damn know that your daughter is my godchild. How in the hell can you put your lovely daughter in such an ordeal? How can you do something like that?" And Jared said, "Good question, Pat." And Vince says, are you questioning my judgment? And Pat says, you're I, damn right. <laughs> I instantly thought, are you threatening me? Are you threatening me? I did too. <laughs> and Vince says, you better act right, motherfucker. I, I will put you in a blind date match. <laughs> and Pat Patterson says, is that a threat? If this is a threat. <laughs> and, the, and the kid goes, a threat. <laughs> <laughs> if this is a threat, then you and Shane can go straight to hell. <laughs> And Jared Briscoe says, while you and Shane uh, are Mr. Mac Man, earn that trip to hell, you better stop and get your own damn coffee. And the crowd oh, popped for that. Fuck. That was a big, big zinger for uh, Jared Briscoe. Oh, oh my God. This well, don't is... worry. Don't worry, James, because Vince has a match for them tonight against Midian and Viscera. <laughs> this is very Steve Austin esque in this match. Yeah. Yes, Patterson and Briscoe are stone cold, and Viscera and Midian are Vince and Vis Shane, of course. Very Vince and Shane like that, Midian and Viscera. <laughs> this is crazy, man. This is nuts. It's awesome. Uh, What's okay. wrong? The show, that's a great lineup yeah, here. You got the blind date right. match, you got the dog pound match, you got the handicap match, you got the handicap match, you got the handicap match. I get the, I get the idea. <laughs> Yeah, like on paper, like the idea of okay, we gotta figure out what stipulation to put sure. Stone Cold in was all right. We're gonna right, fuck everybody. They, that's a po we're gonna fuck our ops tonight. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they they fucked it up though for real. It's boring. Uh, anyways, we get something real fucking sweet. We get the Rock <laughs> Chef Boy RD commercial. Get Chefy with it. <laughs> this is so what based. It's unbelievable. The hell? What's this? The Rock. Yeah. Is a crazy guy, man. This made me question The Rock forever now, man. I don't know. Listen, no disrespect to the chef, the big chef. 
Chef Boyardee. Boyardee? Who, who directed this, by the way, they said. <laughs> well, of course. Director. He has to. The Rock is eating Chef Boyardee on the beach by the pool and on a boat. <laughs> this is the, a crazy fucking situation. The boat is yeah, real man. talk. The boat. <laughs> first of all, the boat is real talk. That's, Dude, the that, boat what was the that hell? era of rap videos. Every rap video right. had a boat man, the, back the, in the day. The, Ravioli on the boat is real. That's real. I don't know about on the what beach. Do you mean that's real. That's real life. <laughs> Have you ever tried to take going a drink fishing? While, no. While a boat's going, you ever try to take a drink? The drink will He's right in your standing face. Imagine, up imagine, a bowl, imagine bowl of eating ravioli. ravioli. <laughs> all in your yeah, face. no, that's real, man. That's real. That's that's the rock. Stop that's crazy. That. <laughs> that's crazy. Don't be a jabroni. Eat your ravioli. <laughs> That's what he was doing, but That's, it just didn't seem feasible to me. The bo- the pool and the beach is a stretch, but when you're on the boat, yeah, that's a That's dangerous situation, right man. There. Ravioli's going to feed him to the fish. Yeah, you got to eat it on the boat. You don't even be warming it up on the boat. You just be eating the ravioli. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. How they fucking... <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the time, those ghost boats got a microwave, but you know... That one would. You're the, out the fishing. I guess you're right. You, you think he was fishing? You think The Rock was fishing? The Rock was... Fishing for <laughs> you did freak fish for your kid, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for, Tony. But I don't know. It looked like he was just eating ravioli. You think yeah, he like went home? Like they went out and like, I don't know, way out deep get some blue marlin and say just ate ravioli and left. <laughs> no. The Rock it says... Just a, it was just a rock, the rocks, the the guy fish. singing the, the rocks and the guy singing the song and a bunch of ladies and he was the only one eating the raviolis. No one else was. Well, they only brought one can. I think well, I was poor planning on can. <laughs> poor planning on Boy RD's part. <laughs> yeah, the, the director. So, uh, <laughs> on, we have Road Dog versus Billy Gunn in the first ever dog pound match. Well, you're you're skipping some WWF headquarters here, son. Yeah, I, Stone, I think James Stone blacked Cole's, out. Stone Cold's got some what, work what to do, bro. What happened this? Stone Cold's got some work. There's Stone a whole Cold. Stone Cold seg here. <laughs> Sorry about that. You blacked <laughs> out, man. You couldn't handle it. Sorry about that. God damn it. So we go uh, earlier today at the WWF headquarters. Uh, Austin is walking through the hallways. He said, get your ass back to work. Just yelling at people. Also, I find out here that in the hallways of WWF headquarters at this time, there was just random pictures of ditties and ass all over the fucking place. Yeah. So I don't know who it was. It was awesome, though. Uh, Austin walks into Vince's office. Uh, three people are there, and they say, welcome, Mr. Austin. Uh, one of them is Danielle, who gets Mr. McMahon's coffee. Uh, G- Giovanni, or Giovanni, I don't remember which one it was. Yeah, Giovanni, I think. Giovanni. Uh, gets him his wine. And Go Jill Shizaki. Is- <laughs> no, he's in the waterfall. Sorry. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, it's no, she, gets, she, she gets Vince his Chateaubriand. Ah, sorry, I wrote wine. I wasn't right all that. <laughs> I can tell you drink. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah. And Jill is the backup. And Danielle asks if Austin wants his coffee. And Austin says, well, it's, you know, it's 10 a.m. It's about time for a beer. So, <laughs> so Danielle's getting a beer. Uh, Giovanni asks if he wants anything to eat. And Austin says, you know, I, uh, st- I am hungry. I'll have another beer. <laughs> <laughs> and Jill that's asks, awesome. uh, can I get you another beer? And he says, no, but you can get me a crown and seven. I don't know what that is. I think that's some kind of alcohol thing. Tony? Yeah, it's crown like, and seven? It sounds like a roll of do it, do it, Yeah, do I was about to say, it's all like a rum and coke or no, something. Crowning, yeah, it's like rum and coke, but crown royale. Uh, Danielle then asks him, uh, you know, you got a board meeting in about an hour, and Austin says, oh, no, thank you, I'm not in the mood for board games. <laughs> <laughs> this was the most friends-ass <laughs> dialogue when I, I went, ever went, seen. Went. <laughs> <laughs> it was, near, 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 it was near, near. them trying to do Stone Cold stuff without an audience is awkward, actually. Yeah, it is. I, I kept expecting the crowd to pop, and they just never did. <laughs> and if they did, he didn't hear it, because it was earlier today, of course. It was a good line, I think. King said it. He said, coffee breaks are now replaced with happy hour. Which I thought was ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Happy hours? I think that's how it went. Oh. Yeah. Happy hours. <laughs> All of them. All of them. <laughs> well, now we get Road Dog versus Billy Gunn in the that's first Mr. ever Ass. Dog Pound Do match. Yes, of course. That's true. Uh, dog Pound match, which you've never seen before, James. I've never even heard of this match until right now. This is a pretty cool concept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why more people haven't done it. Uh, Road Dog beat Billy Gunn. Sorry, Road Dog beat Mr. Ass on Heat, and then Triple H, Mr. Ass, and China all whooped his ass. Uh, so that was setting up this match here, of course. Um, Road Dog says, "You see, badass Billy Gunn's ending up on the short end of this stick." And speaking of stick, if you're not down with that, you're getting your ass whooped. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking real okay. shit. 
<laughs> Great. Let them uh, know. Billy Gunn comes out in a neck brace. Uh, that is very unfortunate. He must have got injured somewhere between this. Uh, Tim White helps him in the ring. There's bull. I, was it bullshit chance or were they chaining pussy? No, it was bullshit. It, it sounded like pussy to That's me. That's what I thought. I think Road yeah, Dog thought it was like pussy, pussy too. Because <laughs> Road Dog says, I can't repeat that, but those people are right. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. And then he points behind him and says, Kane, get back in there. I don't know what that means, but Billy Gunn turns around and sells because he's, oh, he's trying to Kane. startle him you know he's but what does to... that mean kane get back in there where in the you know the, in the ramp the, behind the trust and <laughs> the trauma like, get back in there <laughs> you know you're talking to people like that yeah, get, back get back in there <laughs> <laughs> you're not allowed to come out of the curtain yet <laughs> uh billy sells him and turns around of course his neck is not injured and then billy gun jumps the road dog um this is a crazy match here james <laughs> this is it, this is uh the referee ripping the neck brace off his top tier <laughs> is maybe the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Give that me that shit. Yeah, I've never seen, you are a liar. Give yeah. me that. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, yeah, I wrote down here. I said the referee ripped off that shit. That was awesome. Uh, and then I wrote down Billy wins with the help of China. <laughs> <laughs> None of these matches until the main were shit, man. They were, they did nothing. In they were all wrestling fucking, back in the day, though. They're all bullshit, man. I mean, uh, it, it, this whole match. Billy, they don't put the dog collar on Billy the whole match. He never gets it on, and he wins. He's healing, up. He's healing that's why. <laughs> the, I, the finish was fun. It was actually pretty good, though. The finish was actually pretty dope. So, yeah, Billy is not putting the chain around his neck. Road Dog is just getting thrown around, getting choked with the fucking thing. The bell eventually... Uh, I wrote down, why is the ref letting this happen? Has the bell rung? And then Billy Gunn pins Road Dog for a two. <laughs> So, <laughs> because obviously know. the rules of the dog pound match this is the first time we're ever seeing it, so obviously there's a little disconnect. But you know, maybe you're you know, right. I guess things are right. a little different around here in the dog pound. So that's true. Uh, which is weird. You think Road Dog would know the rules, but I guess not. But anyways, <laughs> he grabs the <laughs> the China part with the yes. uh, with the with the uh, collar was amazing. So I re- China the is hot. China comes down uh, to pull Road Dog off of a pin, and then uh, Road Dog is pissed. The, but the chain that is not linked to Billy Gunn is near China, and she grabs it and lifts it up and low blows Road Dog with it from the outside. <laughs> it was actually a cool shot. You're right. Yeah, crowd crowd like popped huge for it too. Good good spot. Yeah. Uh, and, Billy uh, Gunn then hits the famouser and gets the win. Yeah. So she crotches Road Dog and he bends over because he got crotched, and then Billy Gunn hits the famouser and wins. I was like, yeah, yeah that's pretty. That's pretty good finish. I like that. Uh, they start whooping Road Dog's ass after the match. China's beating him up forever, actually. Just caught, like a fucking two minute beat. Watch down. King of the Ring. Watch <laughs> King of the Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Greensboro Coliseum. Dude, China has the chain on her hand, just beating the shit out of Road Dog. Billy, like every few seconds, tries to pull her off, and she just keeps whooping his ass. Like this, I don't know why this just. You have forever. to hard way me. Yeah, you have right. to hard yeah. way me. <laughs> Dude, does Road Dog have no friends? Yeah, they all betrayed him. Damn, you're right. DX bro. reunion without Road X-Pac? Dog. Xbox in a David versus Goliath Stone Cold Steve Austin match. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know, our truth isn't here yet. He's not here yet. So our yeah, truth comes right. around and he's yeah, just that, been... He doesn't come around for like another year or two, doesn't he? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and then uh, China leaves and Billy Gunn pulls his ass out and shows Road Dog his ass cheeks while Road Dog bleeds on the ground. That man got hit with the no mercy cheese. That's crazy. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't blur it though, shockingly. Uh, so then we get Ken Shamrock showing up to the arena. A little late, no? Nah, he was on his own time. This guy's a crazy maniac. He's actually there's actually some insane Ken Shamrock moments in this in this whole show. <laughs> Ken, dude, Ken Shamrock is my favorite wrestler on the show. Yeah, <laughs> he, he feels like he shouldn't be on this show. Actually, he feels like he like spits out different. So um, uh, Shamrock shows up in his beige jeep. <laughs> crazy. Beast. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter comes up to him and says uh, These cops are your escorts for the night And Shamrock says listen if I'm not being arrested You better keep these cops away from me or I will kill them <laughs> That's actually you know That's a pretty level headed response I think If sure. you're not going to arrest me fuck you Yeah get the Which, fuck away from there me There you go cool yeah. I mean Shamrock might It's funny he's like supposed to be the craziest man on the show But he's actually pretty uh, pretty smart yeah. <laughs> he's, he's very reasonable I gotta say um, the Rock is walking backstage, looking at random things very abruptly. <laughs> what is this shirt he has on? I it's I, the shirt actually gets worse as <laughs> as the night goes on. I don't know. It's like it gets starched before he it goes out. It gets more and more see through somehow as the as it goes on. It's pop blue popped collar shirt looks fucking crazy. Uh, last week, The Rock and Triple H faced off in a cast match, which. 
I believe this is was insane, man. The Rock was in an arm cast because he was injured. This so is crazy. Tri- Triple H was forced to wear a leg cast to face The Rock. Is that right? I think that's right. As far as oh. I know, yeah. I, I, <laughs> th- this is insane. I don't even know I would what like the to hell's believe going that on. Neither of them were injured, and they both just put casts on for the match. That that's also what, could be true, Tony. You because The Rock I, doesn't have a cast on here either. So well, yeah, you're healed. right, Tony. I think maybe it was a match where they had to wear a cast. <laughs> We're going to try something out here. The first ever cast match. Holy shit. This was on the same night where the higher power was revealed. Higher power. And, and the jokes went through the, the ring, ring. And Austin owns WF. Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, they didn't always hit a home run. Let's just say that. During the match, the Rock goes for the people's elbow. Taker gets in and choke slams Rock and then tombstones him on the chair. So that match doesn't have a. Finish. He should have done Sorry people's elbow with the cast. That would have been sweet. He, 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 he was tried. Going for it. He was yeah, going he for tried. Should have yeah. let him hit it. Come on. With yeah, the, the Rock defeated Triple H in one minute and twenty three seconds in a <laughs> cast match. Wait, he won that match? Yeah, the DQ. Rock defeated Triple DQ. H by DQ. Oh DQ. right, damn! The fucking one minute. <laughs> we one saw the whole minute twenty three. <laughs> that's crazy. In the Basically, cast. Like, they spent like two hours putting these casts on and then they go in the match for one minute. You're right. <laughs> uh, so we get the Rock Town Hall. Oh my God. The Rock comes out here in the shirt. <laughs> With the shoulders. Roses and all that. Dude, yeah, the yeah. shoulder. He looks like he's wearing shoulder pads. Like this is crazy looking shirt here. Man. Maybe he's got crazy. a women's shirt on with shoulder pads on it. Like Michael <laughs> Scott style. The Rock can do what he wants. <laughs> Ravioli style. This is a Dude. horrible shirt to eat Chef <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of the worst ever. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if I've ever noticed this. I don't know if they did this all the time, but there was a mic monitor loudspeaker under the turnbuckle. Yes, for, always. For like, they I do. They I did see. Do I that. never noticed that, dude. Yes, they usually always. don't show it, but yeah, I'm pretty sure because I, I think sometimes when they'll do like someone will run in during a promo and just jump somebody, you'll see them have to pull it out of the ring. It's, okay, yeah, I was like, I know concerts do it so they can hear themselves, but I yeah, exact same reason, same reason they do it here because yeah. it's really fucking hard to hear Do they still do it, yourself. Tony? Uh, I don't know. I haven't watched. I haven't been to a show. I haven't been to a live show in a minute. I guess I I never paid attention to it. Honestly, I don't think AW does it, but I can't because I can't recall it ever being in AW. No, maybe not. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. I guess you learn something every day. Yeah, Uh, Rock comes out here finally. The Rock has come back to Worcester. (laughs) All right, (laughs) (laughs) wherever this is, Undertaker. While getting involved in the Rocks match, you did one thing, and that was directly check yourself <laughs> into the SmackDown Hotel. He's just <laughs> fucking with everybody at this point. <laughs> directly. Direc- and even Lawless, directly. <laughs> it's di- two different words. Directly has got to be like the craziest thing I've ever heard. This is insane, man. You think you impress the Rock with your Undertaker symbol <laughs> and claim to steal the souls of all those jabronis? You think think you impress the rock by rolling your eyes into the back of your head if you really want to impress the rock i will come to king of the ring and yo oh, you will come not i will i mean he will be there too but i will you will come I to king will of the directly ring. go to king of the ring <laughs> <laughs> you will put the title online and go one on one with the great one there's a sign in the crowd that spells rudy poo as if it was winnie the poo <laughs> by the way that's awesome <laughs> The crowd is losing it for everything The Rock fucking does here. He was he could have said anything here. Yeah, 100%. Really, he does say anything here. It gets over, but The Rock And says, Undertaker also tries the same thing. He also tries to say anything. And the this crowd is just, definitely the not the first you? time. <laughs> You're right. This is not the first time we've had The Rock Taker promo where Taker just looks like a fucking punk. He right? looks like a fucking jabroni. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rock says, then Undertaker, you bring your monkey ass to the people's How ring. do you? What is Undertaker supposed to do when he comes out here? What are you supposed to do? Your He's monkey ass is getting beat. You're going to the SmackDown Hotel and at the pay per view, fuck you. I'm going to directly shit in your mouth. What is Undertaker to come out and say? Don't worry, no. Taker's got some stuff here to say. Don't you worry. The dead man comes back. I don't want you to doubt the dead man here. No uh, fucking way. You Dude, bring your monkey worse. ass. It gets worse for Taker. It Holy does. Shit. You bring your monkey ass to the people's ring and you try to sacrifice the people's champ but here's the twist instead of rolling your eyes into the back of the head take your entire 33 pound head <laughs> let it roll down your back catch it with your hand and proceed to shove your head directly up your candy ass <laughs> there's no recovery there's what is no that way you can recover <laughs> don't take a good do man don't worry hey, bro he's I'm got it. It. hey <laughs> 
<laughs> so Undertaker's theme hits. Asan Timbale style. Uh, yeah, that's my guy. Well, maybe yeah. not here, but usually is my guy. Asan Timbale. The Rock has just dressed him down. Taker's coming out with Paul Bearer. And Paul Bearer's holding the mic for him, and Undertaker looks at him and says, Hey, that's not funny. <laughs> My head is not big. <laughs> Taker says, All right, young man, sing along time is over. Oh, what that's you're good. doing is your mouth is writing checks your ass can't cash. See, he's got it here, James. He's fucking he's no, about to rock him. I don't he's got know. he's about to rock him. Listen to this. What you fail to realize is, boy, is that I've crippled more people than polio. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What? <laughs> Don't worry. come on. He's here. It is. This yeah, is he's almost got. He's almost All got. Right, it. This is the it, crescendo. Bro. The crescendo. Here it, here it is. In response to your little <laughs> nursery rhyme, let me put it like this, Rock. It's time for you to go to the learning tree. I accept. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Got He's actually him. A, now, that I, now that I hear it back like that, he puts it all together. Nursery rhymes, learning tree, fuck, money, Taker's Tony. on a song. Money. Oh, this is why yeah. he's the champion. Hey, this, yo. <laughs> this is all the says. He says, go to the learning tree and kick it a ring. I accept. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, bro, he got him, bro. I mean, it was You're one lucky. and one. You are lucky the rock didn't grab the mic and go, now nah, hold on a minute. I got one more for you. You, you are an oh, asshole. If this was the group chat, Undertaker would have been obliterated. Oh my God. You're he would have right. never escaped, man. There's no he way. He left the group chat. You're right. <laughs> You would have been like, I think I think you guys should calm down. It's not that funny. It's time for you to go to learning tree. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you see nine people start typing at once. <laughs> no! <laughs> Undertaker is lucky that the wrestler's court shit didn't have group chats back then because his ass would have been roasted on a daily basis. <laughs> Dude, to be fair, there was nothing he could have done here. The Rock already destroyed him. There was nothing he could have done. They should have just had Vince come out because he comes out. Just have Vince. I mean, Vince is on 700 yeah, times on the show. Yeah, that would have made Might as well. I don't yeah. know what to say. Directly. <laughs> Sing along time is over. Yeah, I'm going to directly. Uh, <laughs> directly <laughs> learning tree. <laughs> Uh, Vince comes out here and says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I know you're eager to defend the WWF title. It's talking about Taker, of course. But Rock, what makes you think you're worthy of being number one contender? The only thing electrifying about you these days is those gaudy shirts you wear. <laughs> you know Rock wanted to light him up. That he, he grabbed the mic, they cut it off. Yeah. They grabbed the mic, they yeah. cut it off. They said, no, no. <laughs> that, that gaudy shirt line is worse than gaudy. everything Taker said combined. That is yeah, the worst line right. in the history of all. What an insult. Holy Vince shit. tells him, "You want a shot at the title? No problem. Tonight, in this very, in that very ring, in a non-title match, you must win the match." <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's the stipulation for he, no mercy. He, you must win the match. <laughs> you're right. Objective, bro. Yeah. He doesn't even say who he's facing. Like, I guess he forgot to say that you're facing Undertaker or anything. They say he it on says, commentary, though. Well, they Shane do. says it after too. He like, say, but it's like oh, you okay, must yeah. win the match in order to get a shot at King of the Ring. <laughs> okay. Well, The Rock says, not only will The Rock whoop his monkey ass at King of the Ring, he'll also do it tonight if you saw me. <laughs> well, The Rock is cooking. Uh, and then The Rock's music hits. I don't know if they just forgot <laughs> to do the rest of this, but Shane says, hold on, cut, cut the music. Cut the fucking music. <laughs> He says, since tonight, he's also The Rock, since tonight is a night of stipulations, we have a stipulation between you and The Undertaker, and you'll find out the stipulation five minutes before you come out, if you smell what the Max are cooking. Uh, now hit The Rock's music again, please. <laughs> why not hit their music? Also, why do you give him five minutes? Why do you just tell him, like, when you're in the ring? When you're in the ring, you'll know the stipulation. Because it's a big surprise, Tony. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Deborah and Jeff Jarrett are walking to the ring. Okay. What, uh, this, uh, and maybe I'm missing something. A random crew guy runs by very fast, bumps into Jarrett holding the dog collar, and it, they never, it never goes anywhere. That's water cooler talk. Did you see that? Did you see the guy that ran into Is that Jeff what that Jarrett? was supposed to be? He tried to make a pass at you. Yeah. 
That's yeah. all that was? It was just for the Deborah line that he tried to make a pass at her? No, yeah, I feel like it was like people were going to be like, yo, did you see that? I don't think that was supposed to happen. To, oh, you know, I, mean, I feel like okay. we still kind of wrote a lot. No, okay. very, I, get I was like, I, was, I, I I thought they were going to use it again for ah, that dog dog match. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe that was out of place, you know, and that should have been like before the dog collar match. Like, this do you remember? Uh, yes, you remember when that dude ran backstage to Batista or whatever? Yes, and did the pose? Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like that, I think. I do remember that. Uh, so, WWF Rewind brought to you by Hasbro Centipede. The <laughs> bugs are back <laughs> in town. This game looks like the shittiest game ever. It looks what like is dog this? shit. It looks terrible. It's like a 3D version it's of blinding Centipede. Me. Yeah, it's terrible. It's fucked up. It's very green. It's, it's fucking terrible. horrible. Well, it's, it's on the uh, PlayStation. Yeah, it's on the PlayStation One. That's crazy. Yes, the play they this PlayStation game console is how they describe it. <laughs> That's wow. how it is. So Nicole Bass accidentally hit Val Venus with a guitar while in a thong, and then gets in Val Venus's face, Holy and Val fuck. Venus is pissed. <laughs> Holy fuck! And then Nicole fuck. Bass. <laughs> Says what? No, you yes, gotta, you yes. gotta do it. I couldn't believe she said You got a problem. <laughs> Screw you. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was going crazy. Oh, I had to yeah, rewind Nicole it. Nicole Bass hit her line. That's the boys are back in town line from Nicole Bass. <laughs> I could, you got a problem. Screw you. Holy That's fuck. Awesome. That's all Nicole Bass will ever. That's her whole legacy got right a, there. That's her legacy, man. Everybody's got a problem, brother. The problem solver, Nicole Baz. <laughs> so the true. WWF Attitude Castro GTX. <laughs> if you buy that, you get a six foot poster. <laughs> six foot poster of WWF superstars. Six well. feet. Yes. That is huge. How it do you is. even get that? Well, you have that's to get a you, whole case of Castro. It's in James. the case, dude. It's like, that's why you see like all the stand ups at the mechanics when you go get your oil changed. They got Castro yes. GTX and all the crazy the rock yeah. standies over there. That was Rawls brought to you by Castro where you get your big old poster. <laughs> uh, Chef Boyardee overstuffed beef ravioli. You did on a boat. And no. WWF The Music Volume 3. That was the first one I had. The first uh, WWF soundtrack I bought was that one. You didn't Whoa. get the Castro GTX six foot poster? What the fuck am I going to do with Castro GTX? Drink All it? of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how much was a, and a case? How much was a case of Castro GTX, man? Shit, that's probably a lot. I was gonna say that's probably for a six foot poster. It definitely is a lot. It's <laughs> definitely not... worth it to collect all of them. A case you of Castro GTX of now is one hundred and seventy three dollars and eighty one cents. Mom, don't you need to change your oil <laughs> <laughs> again? Do I it see little again. Kids, little kids going to like unscrew the oil cap on their parents' car so they can get new. You look a little GTX. low, Mom, on the oil. <laughs> You know there was some bastards just going in there ripping up the boxes and taking out the oh, posters. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're spiking the oil it. big time. <laughs> oh, this one's fucked. We gotta just uh, you might as well just, to throw it out. Give me the poster. You're losing a lot of oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I got the Steve Austin one this time. <laughs> I get the Rock and the Austin one. Oh fuck yeah. Uh, so we get Ivory versus Deborah. Yes, uh, WWF Women's Title is on the line here. JR, uh, Jerry Lawler, of course, immediately. Puppies! Fucking titty! Dude, Woo! this whole match to him and looks at him. Come here. Yeah, it stares right at him. <laughs> JR says, This puppy thing has gone out of control. <laughs> it's gone out of hand. And then he asked Lawler, Are you all right? And it cuts to Lawler with big bug eyes. And he says, Oh my gosh, uh, I wouldn't mind carpet stains from those puppies. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, that's crazy. What the you know, fuck? Chris, dog, dogs being dog, dog shit, shit, Tony. Nah, he's yes. talking about titties, man. He ain't talking about animals. That's fucked up. <laughs> that's like crazy. Eight days ago on Heat, <laughs> Mark Henry faced Jeff Jarrett, and Deborah got in the ring to distract Mark Henry, but Ivory beat her ass. Uh, Jerry Lawler says, Meow mix anyone? Uh, anyway, Deborah slaps Ivory before the bell. JR said, This is a crazy line by JR. Uh, the WWF women's title is on the line. This may not be as scientifically perfect as some purists might want here, uh, but it'll be unpredictable to say the least. <laughs> yeah, he basically said, This match will not be good, but hopefully maybe you'll get something out of it. <laughs> this is going to suck for sure. <laughs> Deborah That's is here. The 1999 work rate purist will not like this match. That's crazy. Uh, Dave Meltzer, listen, just fucking relax for a fucking one article. God damn it. We're trying to tell a story here. <laughs> uh, Nicole Bass is now ringside. Uh, uh, yeah, so this, I mean, they don't really do much. Ivory snapmares Deborah with her scarf. Deborah does the same thing. For some reason, Jarrett distracts the referee. As James said, Nicole Bass is out there. Nicole Bass gets in the ring, goozles Deborah. Not chokeslam. Goozle. Just, Just goozle. goozle. 
And then Ivory rolls her up and wins the title. And even JR said, what was Jeff Jarrett thinking there? I think Jeff Jarrett is a dumb ass, if you <laughs> what, ask me. What was he doing? You should go to that damn company that ain't here, because I'm going to tell you, I don't, I don't like you. Sean, I would, I would love for you to get out of here and tell your dad that I still think he's a jerk off. <laughs> tell Mr. Jerry to eat my ass. <laughs> Ivory is now the WWF Women's Champion, yes. uh, which obviously means that... Well, she is the women's champion now. So of course she's probably going to lose to Nicole Bass soon. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine uh, that's where that's leading. Now we go back to Steve Austin. Austin, uh, this uh, Jr. says uh, you want to meet. Uh, speaking of uh, pompous stuff shirts, overpaid windbags. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, Austin's at a board meeting, uh, and is Austin? Sta- he's sitting at a big fucking conference table with a bunch of suits. And all says, gentlemen, and I use that term loosely, I want to get to know each other better. And he gives them, it looks like just a WWF magazine with Austin on it. This is the new orientation manual. I want you to memorize this thing back to front. Right next to Austin, there's two cases of bush light. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's, the, that's the Sunday fishing trip special right there, With the man. ravioli? The bush light is crazy. <laughs> bush light, ravioli, Vienna sausages. You got like crackers. Yo, this is like a good Sunday right here. This guy's crazy. 30 got, pack of bush light? 30, two, two, thir- two, 30 two 30 packs, packs of bush light? You get buzzed off two packs of 30s, man. That's well, not crazy. Not to mention his little his briefcase, too. He's got a little Well, a little that briefcase. does come That's up got here, the harder yes. stuff. That's got the wisers in there. The briefcase is crazy. Austin, Austin looks at one of the guys and he says, if, if he can't read it, then you read it to him. <laughs> That's very nice. Just being a good boss here. And he turns to his side and says, right, there's a guy sitting next to him. He says, all right, well, you do what? And you are who? <laughs> Uh, this is Dennis O'Rourke. He's the senior vice president of marketing. And Austin says, you think that impresses me? <laughs> and Dennis says, I hope so. And Austin says, well, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired for looking stupid. Now get the hell out. <laughs> they should have put a crowd reaction. This would have got such a big reaction. I know. I think. Why would I, I, they surely played it over the gimmick, right? Over the yeah, trial? Yeah, I, yeah, they had to, yeah. Before he was uh, started talking to all the guys, he said, let me move some office supplies, and he knocks a case of beer off the table. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, there's a mail clerk in the room, and he says, hey, you uh, you want a job? <laughs> He's a guy says, yeah. He says, all right, you're promoted. So he just gives him the guy's job that he just fired. He I, says, I wrote you're... it down, to, we call him Blockhead. Does he call him Blockhead? Hey, Blockhead. Hey, hey Blockhead. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> he says, your job is this. When I snap my fingers, I want a beer, and I want it now. And he looks around the room. He says, anyone have a problem with this promotion? Nobody says anything. Does anybody have a problem with this promotion? <laughs> Nobody. And it, no, no one knows that problem. And he turns to his side. He says, uh, you are who? And you do what? And it's Kevin Albanese. And he's the director of MIS. And Austin says, hmm, looks like you got some pudding hanging off your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does MIS mean? Men and shit. <laughs> <laughs> You got some pudding hanging off your mouth. Yeah, shit. You know, he's a brown noser. The guy starts explaining what he does on commentary, but I'm so thrown off because JR just in the background says, he's a nerd. <laughs> yeah, he does say that just with what conviction, too. I say, never mind. I want to have a beer drinking contest. He does not care what this guy has to say. So Austin pops open a briefcase and it has it is filled to the brim with beers. Are these bush lights as well or no? Uh, well, I, I'm I don't not know. sure. He only drink. He would keep it very. Uh, he would be on one beer on every show, whether it was Budweiser. Okay, so or it Bush Light. Was all, okay, yeah, sure. it was probably all Bush Light. Yeah. So he starts passing out all the beers to everybody. Him and the mail clerk passing them out to everybody. He says, "When I come back to this room and you're still standing, you have a job. If I come back and you're puking and crying and laying on the ground, your ass is fired. Start drinking right now, and that's the bottom line because the new CEO says so." So Austin is forcing everybody in this room to drink beer, or uh, just don't drink and you won't pass out. There, there's also that. There's not. They're not workers here, Tony. They don't know the concept of the work. They're just suits. Oh, true. Yeah. They don't know any better. Uh, so we have the JVC Kaboom Box, uh, which is <laughs> Kaboom this, of the this, Week. This is crazy. The JVC Kaboom Box presents the JVC Kaboom <laughs> of the Week. <laughs> extra, uh, extra advertisement. Big Show choke slams Undertaker through the ring. That is fucking crazy. Absolutely stolen from ECW, but it's awesome stuff. I think they even, <laughs> I think they even admitted that they stole that from ECW. I'm pretty sure Terry Taylor specifically admits it on like yeah, some he says, documentary. Yeah, we did. We stole that. Yeah, we, we we definitely stole that, that shit. Yeah. <laughs> it is awesome though, man. I don't it know how sweet. many 
How many like times has that even happened in wrestling? Like a through the ring spot like that. I mean, I know this one, the Taz and fucking Bam Bam one. I'm sure there's another one that I'm thinking of. I not like, like there's one in WCW not Brock and somewhere. Big Show. Oh, there probably mm-hmm. is. Yeah. I'm I don't not know who sure. it was, but I feel like somebody did in WCW. For some reason, I'm thinking Sting, but I don't know if that's right. But yeah, that was fucking... I love that fucking spot so much. It's yeah, crazy that too. was last week, too. Holy shit. Yeah, fucking hell. Uh, Pat Patterson was trying to leave during the break. What the hell? Yeah, Jared uh, Briscoe Brisco. stop him. Yeah. Hey, so where the fuck are you going, buddy? <laughs> I'm getting a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> I got paid for the night. I'm out. He said, I'm trying to get some fresh air, maybe a smoke. Briscoe, you have your bag. He's like, How am I, what am I supposed to do? I'm 58 years old. And Briscoe says, after 20 years, you're going to let him win? Come on, I have a plan. So the, the, the Stooges have a plan now. Uh, and now we get uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's blind date match. <laughs> Tess versus Big Boss Man. <laughs> Fucking hell. On heat last night, they do a lot of heat recaps on this, so I don't know if it was like new, new, or what. But like, I feel like there's more. It was very on important heat. to the to the mainstream program. It feels like it. Yeah, yeah, it feels like it. Um, on heat, Test faced Jarrett. Uh, Ken Shamrock interfered and attacked Jeff Jarrett to help Test get the win uh, and win the Intercontinental Championship. But Deborah used her quote unquote womanly ways to convince the referee to reverse the decision. So Jeff Jarrett is still champion because Deborah flirted with asked. the referee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it yes. looked like she just asked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so of course this match was set up because Vince is not happy that Tess was trying to take his daughter on a date. Uh, Jerry Lawler says uh, Tess is used to hanging out with Motley Crue, and you know what Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson were up to? Fucking. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tess is blindfolded. Big Boss Man is not blindfolded. No, he is not. And they uh, improved his vision to 2020 for this match. <laughs> <laughs> they, gave they, gave him contacts. <laughs> they gave him contacts. JR That's said, Can nice. you imagine Stone Cold being blindfolded? And Lawler says, Good idea. And JR said, This is a bucket of BS, and you know it. And Lawler says, What? And JR says, BS, and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, boss Man uh, is fucking with Test in this match. Uh, Test is obviously blindfolded. He's throwing wild punches anywhere he can. Boss Man kicks him in his ass. He's also doing the best job he can to talk as much as possible so Test knows where he is, uh, which leads to Test, of course, double-legging the Boss Man <laughs> and beating him's ass. <laughs> well, how is that even possible? Uh, he double-legs him, starts whooping his ass. Boss Man then gets up, grabs his nightstick, and hits Test in the head with it and loses the match. Uh huh. Of course. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. So, boss man's DQ. Tess wins. Stephanie comes out, protects Tess from boss man after the match. Yes, because um, boss man boss wants man. to kill him. Yeah, boss man does not want to piss off Vince, so he doesn't hit Stephanie with the nightstick and then leaves. Jr. said, "Why didn't boss man hit her? <laughs> Jr. wanted her Let to fucking take a beating. Jr. <laughs> Get her." Get her! <laughs> Uh, we go to a pre-tape. Steve Austin is now at the Human Resources office. Yes, uh, at Stanford. Austin walks in, and he said, "There you go. There you guys are. Hey, I'm digging the power tie, and it's, it's a fucking dude wearing a stone cold tie. <laughs> I'm gonna show up to do awesome. you doing that. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> he had the standee in the back, the Steve Austin tie. Yeah, he was down. He wanted uh, to keep his job. He was crazy too. What was his bro. name? Matt. Uh, fuck, Matt DeLuca. I, DeLuca, Matt DeLuca. Thank you. Matt I wrote down Matt. Damon. Yes. No. <laughs> Matt Taven. Matt Taven? No. Uh, uh, Sarah, uh, the human resources specialist, is here, and Austin says, well, why don't you use your resources to get Stone Cold a beer? And she says, excuse me? And he says, move it or lose it. I'm thirsty. So she goes <laughs> That's and awesome. gets him a beer, of course. Uh, Austin then shows Matt DeLuca the orientation manual, and he says, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to memorize this front to back. He's very nice about it. Uh, back to front. And you know what might happen? I might come back and I might quiz you something easy. Uh, and I, for, I, he says, I might come back and quiz you. And then he quizzes him on the spot course, before the guy right. even has a chance to read it. He says, how about we try something like this, something easy. Austin316 says, and Matt says, oh, I know that one. I just whooped your... And Austin says, it's okay. You can say it. Profanity <laughs> is allowed. Austin three sixteen says, and Matt says, "I just whooped your cock and balls." No, he's like, yeah. I, just whooped- <laughs> I wish they would. He just starts swear. Fuck, shitty, fuck, fuck. <laughs> they just bleep it out a million times. Uh, he says, "I just kicked your ass," and I say, "You gotta, you gotta have some confidence there, kid." Austin three sixteen says, "This fucking old fucking guy stands up and screams, I just whooped your ass!'" Right into Austin's face. He said, there you go, kid. Now take me to the canteen. 
the walk that this guy does when he leaves is crazy. He's got too, a crazy man. strut to him. Yeah, beast. beast. Yeah. <laughs> so now we have the David versus Goliath Stone Cold Steve Austin match. <laughs> X Pac versus Big Show. You of know, because Vince could be Vince and Goliath Shane are Goliaths, and, yes. and yeah, X Pac is a. You gotta big give it. David. You gotta give it to everyone in this matchup here, man. Because like, I there's a lot to remember here. There are a lot this of. Is, um, I was watching this. Like, there's a lot of is, small things here to remember. Yeah, yeah. This is just entirely an angle. It's not even a match. Uh, of course, last week Big Show choke slam Undertaker through the ring. We had to replay it again just because it was awesome. Uh, Big Show comes out here. X-Pac is already in the ring. Uh, Big Show gets on the mic and says, X-Pac, you got nothing to prove to me. It's all cool. And then he just goes to leave. And I thought this was awesome. This made X-Pac look pretty sweet. I wish they would have just went through with the match, but of course not. Yeah, uh, it did. It made him look real hot for a second. Yeah. X was, he says, I understand you know, you don't want to fight me, but I fight for a living. I'm a man. I've got pride. This thing's been booked. So I've got an, if I get an ass whipping, then so be it. Let's fucking do this. I was like, oh, shit. That's awesome. X-Pac is like, this is a way to make X-Pac look cool as hell. The bell rings. X-Pac throws a kick at him. And Big Show just fucking pie faces him the <laughs> hardest I've ever seen anyone get pie faced. X-Pac goes over the fucking top rope and dies. X-Pac really, I mean, he did everything he could to make this go over. I mean, you gotta give it to X-Pac here in this segment. He was a million bucks the whole he way was. through. Yeah. He was awesome here. Uh, so X-Pac dies on the floor, and then the lights go out. Oh, fuck. Here comes Kane. <laughs> Damn Kane. it. Kane is out here. X-Pac goes on the apron to try to get back in the ring, and Kane just pulls him down and stares at him. And then Kane goes in the ring instead. Uh, X-Pac follows him. He starts arguing with Kane. Kane shoves him out of the way. X-Pac is still arguing with him. Kane turns around and just fucking uppercuts X-Pac and he fucking kills him. And then Big Show's ready to fight. Kane does the Kane taunt. The pyro goes off. The referee runs away. I don't know why he did the fucking pyro. Why did he do the pyro for? <laughs> I actually don't know. I think he just wanted to. I think it's like, ah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> Which is right, so. They got, they got it rigged up. Yeah, whatever. Just do it. Uh, so Kane is bowing up with Big Show. X-Pac comes in the ring and spin kicks Kane in the back of the head. <laughs> just <laughs> fucking rocks him. Then he runs at Big Show, hits a running spin kick. Big Show goes over the top rope. X-Pac is looking crazy here, dude. Yeah, he looks, I mean, from the start to end, I mean, the promo was good. Uh, the way that he even took the pie face from Big Show, that was like one of Xbox's biggest things. Was he was he was never afraid to take something from the ring yeah, to the floor. You're right. Uh, he always looked he always looked great here, and yeah, and the fire up in this match was actually pretty hot too. So it was awesome. Uh, Kane gets up. Big Show is going to get back in the ring because he's pissed, but he's like, ah, ah, never mind. It, lot, lot, actually, I mean, James is right. A lot of like little stuff here to tell the story. I thought this is probably like the best angle on the show. Yeah, for and real. there was so much to remember for all three of them. It's just like there was sure. so, and, and it was X Pac holding it all together. To be honest, yeah, with you, so. and Shout uh, out. X Pac and Kane argue uh, to to end that segment there. Uh, so after that, we have Ken Shamrock. In a straight jacket. Yes. By Sergeant Slaughter and the police. He's being put in the straight jacket, and Shamrock says, You tell Vince that after I'm done with Jarrett, I'm coming after his ass. And you guys think you're you guys think you're full, you know, big shit, huh? Well, after I'm done, I'm gonna beat the hell out of anyone in my way. Get out of my way! <laughs> Shamrock is awesome. Holy shit. Yeah, he he's a sweet. beast. So he is he's so believable that he's gonna kick everybody's ass in the room. He is fully straight jacketed here, so it is uh is pretty sweet. Uh, there was a commercial for the WWF Stone Cold jersey. I was extremely confused as this went on until the very end of it. I didn't know what the fuck this was advertising. I was like, is I this didn't a either. pay-per-view? Or it is went over a- so much stuff here for Steve Austin. At first, I thought it was like, maybe like the Raw had to like change their schedule for baseball. So this is an anti-baseball propaganda no, video. I, I thought it was a, <laughs> for some, some weird King of the Ring promo because they got that coming up. They, I was like, is this a commercial for King of the Ring or something? But it wasn't. They, Especially for like Judgment Day and stuff, they would do weird fucking promos for like yeah, black and white yeah. footage and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. this Stone Cold baseball jersey, thirty nine ninety nine plus nine dollars shipping. That's they would, you had to put the nine dollars in the envelope. In They're the like, envelope, yeah, and yeah. mail it to Times the PO were box. So crazy back then, right? Get that money order. They censor the phone number, but not the like address that you send anything to. So you can still just send shit to this PO <laughs> send box. Nine dollars to see what you get back. <laughs> I was said thirty nine ninety nine plus nine dollars. <laughs> so the commercial was weird because it was like guys playing baseball and it's like a game of baseball requires control at all times, respect for your opponents, and a high heat on the chin. And then 
buy Showing the Stone Cold jersey. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, buy the Stone Cold jersey. Stone Cold <laughs> doesn't do any of that. Here's the jersey. Buy it, please. Thank and you. then he says, who cares if you're the CEO of the WWF? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel sure, like that line the was... Angle. That line was edited, yeah, of course. I feel like that line was edited in, like, last second. To yeah, see you they're bit. doing it live, probably. He's like, yeah. oh, shit, we gotta get this poison. You're right. Uh, Jeff Jarrett versus Ken Shamrock in a straight jacket match is up next. Non-title, James. Please make sure you note this. Oh, of course, because if the title was on the line, then what? That would change so much. Well, how here. could Jeff Jarrett possibly fucking lose this match? Why not just put the title on the line? God damn yeah. it. Uh, so, oh, speaking of stuff that happened last week, Tony, the fucking lines then match. <laughs> that they, was last week as well. I know they, they recapped yes. it, but that was... The, oh, Same show. How do they... They re how do they, they holy shit. I, don't, you they, th don't you ever think, like, we should save this for next week? We got so much going, going on. They were going, bro. They did not care That's at all. That's crazy. They, they recapped the Lions Den match from last week. Uh, it ended with Jarrett hitting Shamrock in the head with a fucking chair so goddamn hard. Uh, and then Vince putting Ken Shamrock in an ankle lock and winning. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I can't believe he let him beat it. He did it with the ankle lock. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shamrock uh, is brought to the ring by cops here. Uh, he's wearing a straight jacket. Shamrock does his taunt on the apron but can't punch his head, so he just screams even louder than usual here. I gotta say, man, I almost feel like they should have gave Ken Shamrock a little run of him just wrestling in a straight jacket because this was Dude, awesome. It, this was awesome. This was like my favorite match of the night, man. It's so awesome. good. <laughs> He's he so like, charismatic. Yeah, man. He was awesome. He's so good with just kicking and doing gimmicks with his like legs. Like, yeah. Uh, they do a ton of spots here with Shamrock where he's like throwing kicks to keep Jared away. Uh, Jared's taking him down, but Shamrock puts him in like a grapevine. He grabs his leg. Uh, he fucking put, drops hole, holds him and locks his legs up. Jared has to rake his eyes to get out of it. Uh, at one point, Jr. just starts fucking shit talking Waller. Oh, you're a butt kisser. You want some bliss text? How about some Vaseline? How, how about some Vaseline for those chapped corporate butt kissing lips of yours? He went on like a big like. He was really like agitating it up. Fuck like, you. Yeah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> Uh, Shamrock hits a shoulder block, a leg lariat. Uh, he puts a dude, submission. Dude, the leg lariat dude. is so good, man. It Holy. was awesome. He's throwing him like a madman. He's doing awesome here. Like I said, just with his legs. Uh, what is the submission he put him in to, to win? I didn't know. I don't remember the name. It looked it. like a head triangle. That Okay, head triangle is probably the way to go. I, I was trying. I thought they had another name, but I couldn't figure it out. But head triangle, I think, is the best way to describe it. Uh, he puts Jared in head triangle, and Jared taps out. Fucking Ken Sherrock beats the Intercontinental That's Champion crazy. with That's his, just his legs. <laughs> So, of course, Shamrock... I got to give it to Jared, man. That dude oh, he did business to... all yes. the time. You're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh... I assume this was going to end with a guitar shot to the head of in the straight jacket, which would have been crazy. It would have been awesome. But even better, Tony, uh, Shamrock wins. So, obviously, Tim White, the referee, they say, has the key to the straight jacket. So he is going to let Shamrock free until Vince McMahon comes out and punches Tim White in the head. <laughs> <laughs> he punches him in the head, Tim White goes flying, and Vince steals the key and runs away. And runs Shamrock... away like a madman, like 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've never seen him run that fast, and Shamrock's flipping out, kicking the stairs' asses, and just losing his mind. It was I love this segment. Yeah, this was sweet. Uh, then we get the GTV segment of the night. Holy fuck. You, Billy I... Gunn is getting his <laughs> ass shaved. <laughs> Uh, and the girl sees a zit on his ass, and then no. Billy Gunn says that she must have put it there. <laughs> she, Billy Gunn is talking, and he says, this must be an honor for you to sit there and shave my ass. You know, it's something you want to take home and put on your mantle. I don't know if he was talking about his ass hairs <laughs> or his ass itself. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where this was going, honestly. Billy says... Uh, I still don't know where any the, any of the GT... I think the GTV stuff was just water cooler talk again. Like, Russo it, just trying uh, to Yeah, it was just talk about. stuff for uh, random yeah. little shit like that. Uh, she says, I think I see something here. And Billy says, I bet you do see something. That's a lot of ass. <laughs> she <laughs> says, now I see a zit. And he flips out. He says, you did something. And if you tell anyone you've seen a zit on my ass, you will never have the privilege of shaving my ass again. <laughs> she does this regularly. <laughs> All the time. Well, it's Crazy. a privilege, of course. Wouldn't you want to? Yeah, sure. Why not? There you go. Uh, Patterson and Briscoe versus Midian and Viscera. Of course. <laughs> Classic. Uh, I love that Patterson and Briscoe just come out to Hulk Hogan's theme, and uh, that is just, just a, yeah, that's just, just what okay. it is. Yeah, yeah. that's just okay. Uh, last week, Shane was Shane in a handicap match with X Fucking Kane. Is that what this was? Because that's what it looked like. 
It did look like that. I actually am not sure what okay. kind of match this was. Uh, there could have been a person and they got like knocked out or something. Or yeah, uh, Shane got beat up by X Pac and Kane, but then the Mean Street Posse jumped them in Kane and Mankind masks. Of course, they had to do that because they lost a loser leaves town match against Patterson and Briscoe, uh, but they showed up anyway, and that was okay. And Patterson <laughs> and Briscoe kicked their ass as well. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know, man. This this the match is this show is crazy. That's all I'm gonna say on this. This show. I mean, that's fucking crazy. Uh, Midian and Viscera come out, but before they get to the ring, the Mean Street Posse in hats come from the crowd and jump Patterson and Briscoe. Because <laughs> you never, you never know who they are. You know? <laughs> well, how can they got hats on? The, the hats. The it's gotcha, like Jeff Jarrett that last week with that's, the hats. That's fucking <laughs> what crazy. mask is he wearing? <laughs> uh, so Midian and Viscera get in the ring. Was Midian's finisher the neck breaker? Because he does a lot here. I. You know what? Maybe it was. I don't really was remember it? Midian winning too many matches, yeah, <laughs> so, really. but That's... he does the neck breaker a bunch here. I don't remember. I feel like in the Did video games, do... it was a reverse DDT. I'm wondering if that was a slop drop. You remember when he was pig? Did he do the slop drop? Why did I think the slop drop was something else? I thought slop Is drop it? was a different move. I don't know. I'm just thinking of it. I mean, that's reason. that's a good fucking... That's probably... I, yeah. No, the slop drop was a reverse DDT. Okay. Yeah, is, is there like a, is there a cage? Is Midian fucking finisher <laughs> cage match? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. Let me take a look here. This we pro do wrestling research fandom. live on the show. We do the this. I, well, this doesn't help. The eye opener. I don't know what the fuck that was. Let's see what it was in WrestleMania 2000. Okay. Here's his entrance. All right. Here is his finisher, and it is the power. Oh, it's the Canadian backbreaker. Is that's his front finisher? What's his back finisher? This is either accurate or inaccurate. Oh, we don't see his back finisher. All right, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was trying to get the neck breaker over the here. The neck breaker sure. was his finish, Tony, of course. Of That's course. I love it. The yeah. N64 will figure it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Midian's hitting neck breakers. Viscera's doing the big fucking splash on both, like on all of them. Uh, Viscera splashes Briscoe as well. People are trying to break it up. Uh, as I noted earlier, Midian has the pants on that spell his name wrong, It's <laughs> which is fucking <laughs> awesome. I don't oh, know whose fault that was. Do you think Midian had it in his mind it was spelled one way and WWF just said no way? Or was it the opposite? Because his pants say M-I-D-I-O-N. But it's sure, M-I-D-E-O-N, sure. of course. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> and to wrap it up, Viscera hits another splash on Briscoe to, uh, to really send them home there. Ah, uh, so <laughs> oh, no. we go to the pre-tape. <laughs> well, The Rock was walking through the hallway, or not walking, he was just in the hallway, actually. He was of course, abruptly yes. looking at things again. Walking back and forth in a very small spot, just to remind you that The Rock was here. So we go back to the WWF headquarters, and Austin and Matt DeLuca are walking through them, and Matt calls Austin a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, Austin walks into accounting. He says, I want to see some books. And the guy behind the desk says, what what set of books you want to see? And I'll say, how many books you got there, Sean? Just give me a damn book. Yeah, that's how accounting works. I'm sure you just pull the shit out of your ass. Oh, my gosh. So he shows him one of the books, and I'll say, oh, you got a lot of big numbers here. How come they're in red? <laughs> and he says, well, these are losses. Why, what, what losses? Why are there losses there, Sean? We should be making money. And the guy says, well, there's from a lot of incidents that, uh, well, you've been a part of. Like the Zamboni and the monster truck. Oh, and like, oh, well, let's, uh, well, let's move on there, son. I don't, we got to talk about that. Uh, and he keeps going down. I said, oh, that's a big number there. Uh, what's that? I said, oh, that's Vince McMahon's salary. And I says, oh, he makes a lot of damn money. How about you take some of those zeros and move them to, uh, to Mankind's salary? He's been working pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> he's been taking the ass kicking. Yeah, he's, been, he's been getting his ass well. Why give some also, extra money there, son? Vince shouldn't have a salary. He was fired by Stone Cold Steve Austin earlier. I fired that son, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, shut up. <laughs> uh, Austin finds another name on the list. He says, uh, which, uh, which, which number is this? Who's this? And, uh, and the guy says, oh, that's Shane McMahon's salary. And Austin says, no, no, no. We're going to change that. That's now the beer budget. And the guy says, we don't have a beer budget. And Austin says, what? <laughs> and that's how that segment ends. <laughs> Next, we have a WWF No Mercy classic right here. Holy bro. fuck, man. <laughs> Dan, 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 Jesus Christ. Dan, 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 Dan. Versus the Acolytes in a handicap match for the tag titles. Tag titles I, are on the line. <laughs> I just imagine the, the animation with them walking out. Oh, both of them. Well, they, this that is animation has so burned in my head, dude. They did not yeah, have that song just yet. No, so. no, 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 no. But I'm just imagining the video game of them. Yes. Fuck. 
Damn, damn, it's fucking horrifying. It was always, too, and it was always like, oh, man, you want protection? No, not really. Okay, we're going to fucking kick your ass. <laughs> oh, you oh. do want protection? Okay, uh, fucking fuck kick you your then. ass. <laughs> <laughs> You made us work tonight. Fuck you. Yeah, damn it, man. We want to let off. Uh, so Kane meets the acolytes on the ramp. They start brawling. Uh, and this is fucking what feels like 10 minutes of them just getting heat on Kane, man. It's just getting heat on Kane. Just the whole on, on the whole time, man. Like Kane will do something and then they just glom him. Kane will do something. They just fucking glom him over and fucking over again and get used to it because that's exactly how the fucking main event goes too, man. Kane goes to throw Farouk. Farouk reverses it and whips Kane into Bradshaw who hits him with a clothesline from hell on the floor. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it's so it's crazy because, you know, later on with the clothesline from hell is like a kill move 24 seven. He just does it. here. Um, but yeah, it's around this time. He was just doing it. It's just a good yeah. spot for him. Um. They fucking throw Kane into the stairs, and Kane takes a crazy ass bump over these stairs. It was like mankind, almost mankind esque, if not worse. He like flies over these fucking things. It was awesome. At one point, the acolytes just switch corners, <laughs> just to fucking whatever. Okay, they start tagging in the opposite side of the corners. Uh, Bradshaw goes for the closeout from hell. Kane ducks and hits a choke slam. Fruit gets in. Jumps Kane before he can get the pin. The crowd boos. They're fucking over this shit, too. <laughs> Kane goozles Farouk. Uh, Bradshaw gets in uh, and hits Kane with a chair. I guess the ref was distracted. Uh, hits him in the back and then hits him in the fucking head with a chair. And then they hit the reverse 3D for the win. That was their move? Yeah. Yeah, look, yeah the back body drop neck breaker. Yeah. They, all right. They win with that. Tag jams uh, retained. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then x -Pot comes in with a chair. Xbox comes in to make the save. They stay in the ring. I thought this was pretty funny. They stay in the ring, not afraid entirely of Xbox with the chair. They're kind of going to swarm him. Kane sits up and then they run away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, backstage, Ken Shamrock is having a gamer moment. <laughs> he is fucking dude, <laughs> throwing himself into walls and every just smashing his head against doors and walls. Uh, he breaks free of one arm out of the straight jacket. It sounded like he broke his arm. I thought he broke his arm to get out of the straight jacket. I thought, like, Jesus, that's crazy. <laughs> Uh, he, and then, he did rip it. He ripped uh, the gimmick. That'd been awesome. He, that was the gimmick. Oh my god! He broke his own arm to get out of it. Well, he. Uh, we see him a little bit later in a cool we segment. Do. But first, we got to go back to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Back to the headquarters. Austin is now in Mister McMahon's office. There's a million plaques in here. Jr. said, "Oh, McMahon has a shrine to himself for God's sake, shelf serving." And then he makes fun of Vince having a facelift. <laughs> I don't know what happened uh, there. Jr. Yeah. was very. He was. Fuck very, you. He had, yeah, he had some shit to get out tonight. He's gonna get this out. Yeah. Uh, Austin is sitting at Vince's desk with a bunch of beer stacked up. He's got his feet up. He's I've determined this office, office needs a little more bullshit because I've been swimming in it all day, so I figured he needs some more. He's, and he goes to the door, opens the door, he looks at it, bring that shit in. This whole room is full of bullshit. And the guys with the wheelbarrows from an hour and a half earlier <laughs> finally show up and they start dumping cow manure all over the office. And I was like, Stone Cold doesn't spare no expense. Bring in some more bullshit. We got a good pile here, but this isn't good enough for Vince McMahon. <laughs> the, bo the bottom line is this place smells like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I start pouring beer on the shit. And I'm pretty sure Lawler was about to say he thought he was pissing on it, but it was well, they, him they do dumping beer. Because they're cutting to Vince and Shane watching this, and then they cut to like back to the manure, and then it just yeah. looks like piss is coming out, but it's a beer. Right. It's oh, a really he, tight oh, close he's, up he's of it. Oh, he definitely said, oh, he's pouring he beer. Said piss, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then it, show, it shows Vince and Shane walking through the backstage area, very pissed off for a very long time, it felt like. Like yeah, it wasn't like a forever, walk, and then they cut yeah. to commercial. They just walk forever, like right before they get to Gorilla. Uh, and then we get the Vince and Shane Town Hall. Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, Vince was very, very adamant here that he would not forgive or forget. <laughs> Dude, Vince says, Austin, Stone Cold, you have disgraced the World Wrestling Federation, and I won't forget, and I won't forgive what you've done on this day. But this is truly the <laughs> darkest day in WWF history. And we, we can't wait for this opportunity when you no longer will be CEO, so this is our challenge. We take this CEO title of yours, we take Shane's stock in the company, we take Vince's stock in the company, and you take all that and you hang it above the ring at King of the Ring, and the only way to reach up and grab it all, Austin, is by climbing a ladder. That's right, Austin versus Shane and Vince in a ladder match. 
that was not any of the matches they talked about. <laughs> no, earlier. not at all. We, we not tried a out all single other one. Stuff and then I would have loved to have seen a ladder match tonight. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Uh, and Vince says, with only one other stipulation to come tonight. And Jared's like, what the fuck? Another stipulation? And Shane says, that relates to you, Rock. And Jared says, oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> if you can be victorious uh, if you're ma- in your match this evening, then Rock, you will have your title shot at King of the Ring. But the other stipulation... And Ken Shamrock's music hits, and he runs to the ring. Vince bails, and Shane takes a belly to belly suplex. <laughs> that was <laughs> he awesome. Dumps him. It was awesome. Shamrock then chases Vince up the ramp, just runs after him. It was awesome. Yeah, I actually really liked this segment with uh, Vince running away and all that shit. It actually looked really cool. Made made Shamrock look like a million bucks here. They, Hell I, yeah. I still, it is still crazy to me that Shamrock didn't have even a short run with the title. Like, I don't know if it's because he had that shitty ass backlash match with Taker, and they were like, ah, never mind. Ta- Taker, yeah, Taker had something to say about yeah, that. I one. think he said, so. Huh. So this is the guy, huh? Go back to the learning tree. <laughs> oh, shit. No, not the learning tree. That's the worst spot. <laughs> well, anyways, the Super Soaker presents the 1999 King of the Ring. So what was it? Pumped and locked and coming. Charge it. <laughs> yeah. Pump it. Cock and ready Soak to it. Soak it. <laughs> Dude, I don't know why I didn't think of it, but I was like, there's no way we are watching another Raw that has The Rock versus Undertaker in the fucking main event. This is of course, impossible, of man. Course. Well, they said, now hold on a minute. We got one more for you that no. you might like in this main no. event here. <laughs> no. Triple H no. is here. And now it's a triple threat. Undertaker, Rock, and Triple H. Triple H comes out and he says, uh, his music is still playing. JR says, what is Triple H doing here with that Jezebel China? She hasn't done anything. <laughs> Triple H says, before Shane was really interrupted, he didn't get to make mention of what the stipulation was. The stipulation is me. It's a triple threat. You gotta get so you gotta get through him and you gotta get through me. So it is a triple threat fucking main event here. Rock, Taker, and Triple H. And you remember that Acolytes match? Just fucking watch that again. That's exactly what this fucking match is. Is that man. is this is that another nickname for Triple H? It's the stipulation. I am the stipulation. <laughs> 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 it's I'm me. surprised they didn't try that. Yeah, because is he the game yet? Here, he is right. Uh, all right, he's probably the game. So yeah, yeah, because he is. I am the game. So they are just whooping Rock's ass, just whooping his ass all over the fucking place, every position, every part of the ring, outside the ring, off the announce table, just whooping his ass. At one point, Paul Bearer laughs in the Rock's face and says, "Ha ha ha! That's what you get." And Jr. says, "Paul Bearer is just." Hideous. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't even talking about his character. He did. He's just talking about what that Percy Pringle. He said, listen. You are an ugly freak. Uh, they start fighting up the ramp. Uh, Rock, every so often, will get the better of them, but Taker will show up and just fuck them up. Rock throws Triple H into the truss, and I feel like it almost knocks the entire stage over. It, like, Holy it's shit, fu- that was yeah, that was. It tilts that truss looking. for the rest yeah. of the match. This match did not have to be as long as it was. This is like a 15-minute heat main event. This is yeah. fucking bullshit. Oof. Longer! Undertaker choke slams Rock out of a rock bottom as he goes for it on Triple H. He goes for the tombstone. Rock gets out of it, shoves Taker into Triple H. Uh, Triple H is out now. Rock bottom on Taker. People's elbow to Taker uh, as he bumps Triple H off the apron. The, the ref is down. But a new referee comes out. One, two... China pulls the fucking referee. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> then Earl starts to count, but Triple H breaks it up. At one point, Taker goes to Irish with Rock, and Rock reverses it, and China, for some reason, still trips Undertaker in the process, which pisses off the dead man, and he goes outside the ring and goozles China. <laughs> Just <laughs> full-on goozles her. Triple H grabs Taker by the hair from the ring and drags him on the apron. Taker hangmans him. Uh, Rock hits the rock bottom and gets the fucking win and immediately leaves. Everyone on this fucking corporate ministry team is a dumb ass, man. They are all stupid. Yeah, I hate them all. They all suck. They can all die. It's unbelievable. Uh, China checks on Triple H and starts arguing with Taker. And then Triple H and Taker start fucking fighting it out after. The corporate ministry tries to break it up. <laughs> so it ends with <laughs> the two fucking top heels fighting. And, and all the heels trying to break it up. And everyone is confused. They're imploding. Like like earlier, they wanted us to implode and explode. Yes, and of course. Whatever. Yeah. Yes. Wow. What a show. Yeah, fucking. What an awful, awful, awful show. Yeah, that was fucking rough man <laughs> we only watched it because we were like oh that, let's remember the austin ceo stuff that was sweet and then yeah. like it's it like was we we talked about like last week they did like five banger all-timer segments they could have saved like one of those for this week you know what i mean yeah like, 
You could have done something. They didn't, though. Yeah, it was definitely a fucking rough one. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Thank you, Stone Cold, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the, raw, the Raw next week was Taker versus uh, Triple H. God damn and it, no. <laughs> and, and The Rock interfered, of course. No! <laughs> yes. No, no, yes! We're gonna, yes! no, we gotta go. We gotta go. I don't want to talk the about it. Next week is Stone Cold versus Taker. The no, next week after that was The Rock versus Triple H. The next week is Stone Cold and the Big Show versus Undertaker. Okay, no! Undertaker versus Triple H. I'm out of here. Goodbye.